Hello and welcome to the big long hard tutorial on stuff. My name is totally besides the point and you are watching a technical fiasco in which I struggle with computer stuff while you struggle to learn something from my Eastern European accent. In this tutorial series I have set the goal of going through several different IT topics. This will be a beginner level tutorial. Here's an overview. We are going to make a virtual web server using VirtualBox. We are going to install OpenSUSE on it since it's awesomeness we are going to configure SSH, Apache, MySQL and Samba we are going to test our server by installing WordPress to follow along you need a computer at least as good as mine which really isn't asking much as you can see my OS of choice is Linux Mint but you can use any operating system you are semi proficient in Mac OS or Windows or any other OS that VirtualBox can be installed on. Let's get started. The first step is to set up VirtualBox. We won't go through the installation process. Just go to virtualbox.org. On the left you can see the downloads link. From here you need to download the appropriate version for your system. For Linux users I recommend using the newest version from the VirtualBox website. I suggest you also download the user menu from the documentation section. After you set up VirtualBox, you need to download and install the VirtualBox extension pack. A quick note for Linux users, post installation you need to add yourself to the VBox users group in order to be able to use USB devices in your virtual machines. You can do that by entering user mode A G vbox users username username as in your username the second set step is to acquire the OS for the server go to opensuse.org click on the big orange get it we want the installation DVD I suggest the BitTorrent download method and I suggest seeding a bit to show your gratefulness and help minimize traffic costs for the SUS people Once you have VirtualBox installed, it's time to start creating virtual machines. Find and start VirtualBox. Click the new button and next. In the name field, enter OpenSUSE. Notice how the OS type changed to Linux and the version to OpenSUSE. Of course, you can name your server anything, but after that, it is recommended to manually set the OS and version. This way VirtualBox can help set up a virtual machine compatible with the OS that will run on it. Press next. It will ask for the amount of virtual memory. It is recommended not to give more than 50% of the total amount of memory you have on your PC. Linux works well on 512 megabytes, so there is no need to give it more. Click next. Now it asks for the hard drive. Don't touch anything. Click next. Make sure VDI is selected. Next. By default the dynamically allocated option is selected. We prefer the fixed size option. After you press next it allows you to choose the location of the virtual box disk image and set its size. If you don't have enough room on your hard disk you can shrink it down to 4 gigs. If you have tons of space, you can make it bigger to allow yourself some experimentation later. I'm going to leave it at 8. Next. Now press create and wait for it to finish. And create again. And done. Almost. Click settings. From here you can change the virtual machine settings. Go to system, remove the check from floppy in the boot order, then mark it and use the down arrow to move it to the bottom. Click on the processor tab. Set the execution cap to 80. This prevents the guest system from hogging your processor. We want the host system to be usable. Go to storage. Now select the empty item under EDA controller. This is your virtual optical drive. To load the ISO file we downloaded, click on the CD icon in the attributes field on the right and select choose a virtual something. 
now browse to the folder where you downloaded the OpenSUSE installation DVD and select it. Go to Audio and remove the check from the Enable Audio checkbox. Go to USB. If you get an error, make sure you fix it and then come back. If you are using Linux, make sure you have added yourself to the VBOX users group as mentioned earlier. If you have and still not happy, try rebooting your system. Go to Network. Make sure Adapter 1 is enabled. Make sure it is attached to NAT. Finally, click OK to close the settings window. Next time, we boot. If you like this video, why not subscribe, rate and share. If you don't like this video or you just have a suggestion, write me a comment.